My name is Ben Seeley, uh, and I've won two World Othello Championships. I've been playing the game for almost 18 years, I think. I would describe it as, okay, it's the game with the, the black, pe you know, the pieces that are black on one side, white on one, the other side, you flip the pieces, and, uh, oh, actually, a friend of mine likes to say that it's the game that aliens would be most likely to play. Because it's, it's a, it's got such simple rules, and it's such like a, like such a fundamental game, um, that they probably do play it on other planets. That doesn't really describe the game, but I think it describes maybe the significance of the game, perhaps. <laughs> okay, so a lot of beginners are used to other games. In other games, it's much more about capturing your opponent's pieces, like games like chess, games like Go. But in Othello, it's much more counterintuitive, which is part of why it's fun, where you don't really want to surround your opponent's pieces. Ideally, usually you want to be on the inside of your opponent's pieces, because then you have all these moves radiating out from inside. And that gives you power, that gives you control. If your opponent has all of his pieces or her pieces on, on the exterior, they don't have very many options and you can usually do what you want with the game. It's such a flexible and counterintuitive game. It'll surprise you more than I think almost any other game will. Even world-class players, you know, sometimes the best move will just be like, oh my God, I can't believe that's the move because it just will violate our expectations. Even though we've already stretched our expectations so much already. There's so many different ways to win and some of them are almost the exact opposite of others where sometimes it's like, well, you want to control this corner and that's like the decisive element in the game. And other times it's like, because you had no pieces at all in that, in that uh, diagonal, um, you can get a swindle off of that. So there's, there's swindles, there's traps, there's parity, there's um, stoner traps we call them, swekany traps we call them, um, wedges. And it's also a very interconnected game. All of the pieces are connected to the rest of the other pieces. You know, you can you're literally using you know these pieces to flip to these pieces, or you're you know uh, getting over here to flip these pieces. Um, and that I think is a lot like life. I think it really helps to train people in this way of seeing things, where it's like, what's the context, you know, and what how are things connecting to each other? And it's a very very much a context driven game. You know, there are almost every kind of move that is good in one situation can be bad in another situation which often doesn't look that different. So it really gets you to pay attention to context. I thought it was a very exciting game because there's a lot of pieces changing on each turn. You know, you can have as many as 20 pieces changing on a single move. So that's very exciting to just be making these dramatic changes sometimes to the game, which are so common in Othello. It's, it's like, like my hands are shaking up, flipping all the pieces, you know, trying to complete the game on time. And, um, and then you get to the end and you don't actually know for sure whether you've won or not. You have to actually count out all of the pieces. That's always incredibly dramatic. And then you find out that you, you, know, you, that you narrowly lost or that you got a draw or that you won. And then this, there's, so there's a very sudden moment of impact of what has happened. It's a lot of life, it's like all about the short term and you know, just grab, grab, grab. Uh, but it's always different. It's really more about the long term and about, you know, you can have fewer pieces now, but finish with more pieces later on. Sometimes it's quite dramatic in how the games finish, and that's nice too.